is Holy Spirit's greatest hour, his greatest move, greatest movement of the spirit is happening right now, right now. And you and I have been invited to participate in Pentecost. I want somebody to write that down. I'm invited. I've been invited to participate in Pentecost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Pentecost never gets old. In Amando Shaya. Pentecost never gets old. Pentecost is never uh, 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 a static. It's always fluid. Pentecost is always moving. Pentecost is always engulfing and embracing. And this is the hour in which we must get to Pentecost. Hallelujah. Uh, we must press in. We, we, must, we must decide. We must be intentional about being a part of the last day outpouring of Holy Spirit. You don't want to miss this. You don't want to be stuck someplace in ignorance. You don't want to be someplace unknowing about the move of Holy Spirit. Somebody asked me the other day, I was at the Unity Baptist Church and someone asked me and said, well, you sound like you love Holy Spirit more than you love Jesus. And I said, how do I sound like that? But what I do recognize is that I must elevate my love for Holy Spirit to the same level that I love Jesus Christ. And so I've been preaching Jesus for 50 years. Now I'm going to preach Holy Spirit for the next 50. Praise God. Because what I found out is that there is, there is this disconnect between Jesus and Holy Spirit. The era of Jesus, the era of Holy Spirit, there seems to be so much confusion. And yes, we preach Christ so that sinners can be saved. But then we preach Holy Spirit so that saints can be mobilized and energized and navigate life successfully. Praise the name of our God. Hallelujah. Come on now. Oh God, I've been invited. So I must elevate. I must elevate my respect, my honor, my reverence, my worship for Holy Spirit to the same level in which I have Jesus Christ. They're not like this, folks. They're exactly like this. So when you see three, it's Father, Son, and then Holy Spirit. It's not Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Help you understand it. So that there is no lesser of power by the time it gets to the third person. Father, then lineally Son, then Holy Spirit. They all are one. Praise God. They function as one, yet they are distinctly three. So there's not Father, and then Son, and then Holy Spirit down here. No, that's how you've treated him. You treat him like he's the third part of the Godhead, but that he's lesser than Jesus and much lesser than the father. The devil is a liar. Let's correct our theology in the name of Jesus. There is a continuum. If you were to put the three in a circle on a piece of paper, rather than lines vertically or even, uh, even horizontally, you would see that the intrinsic Godness in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, but you need to put, draw a circle, draw a circle, and put in the circle Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And you will see that there is no break of power. There is no lesser of authority. There is no lesser of influence, impact. There is no lesser of deity. Correct your theology. Oh my God, if you correct your theology, if you correct your theology, you will be much further in your pursuit of Pentecost. But when we come to the place that we ignore Holy Spirit, or we even come to the place where we act as if uh, we have some, some uh, uh, rights to Jesus 
and only Jesus. We become Jesus only and don't even know it. Don't even know it. And so we, we are watching now. We are watching many, many things, praise God, come into uh, the understanding that now Holy Spirit is moving in the world, move, moving in the land. Holy Spirit is moving in the world, moving in the land, moving by his spirit. God is moving. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, good morning to my children, my firstborn, Shannon, my firstborn plus April, and to my children. I've raised them to understand Pentecost. I want them to know it. I want my grandson to know Pentecost. Now, if you're, if, oh Jesus, if in fact you are looking at, I'm sorry, y'all just hold on just a minute. Let me, let me, let me do this. Hold on just a minute. We got some funny stuff going on here in the name of Jesus. We're going to start our Zoom again. We had some crazy stuff happening. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, we're back. Amen. That Zoom, we're back. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. I apologize. I certainly apologize with that. Hallelujah. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. In the name of Jesus. Y'all just hold on in a minute here. Praise God. All right, we got it together. Uh, Zoom is doing some crazy stuff here. We will report that. I do apologize uh, to those of you that are here in our Zoom class. I do apologize for that. I don't know where that came from, but it won't happen again. I guarantee you. All right. Now, so we're getting our theology together. So take a piece of paper and draw a circle. Good morning to those of you on Instagram. We had to clean up Zoom. Zoom was doing some crazy stuff. Praise God. So when we look at uh, what is happening in theology, we call it systematic theology. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So draw a circle and you will see a better visual of the oneness of God the oneness of God, all right? And so when you are dealing with the oneness of God and you are dealing with how God moves uh, in, in the land. So there was a day that was Father Day. There was a day that was Jesus Day. And now there's a day of Spirit. Now, Spirit Day, we call it the third day. Now, when Jesus gave us Holy Spirit as a gift, he did not give us Holy Spirit only for the physical world. He gave us help with us, ourselves, all right? So Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they all play a role in your complete purpose and your divine destiny. They all play a role. And so when we look at how father plays a role, son plays a role, Holy Spirit. Now, so Jesus Christ has come, we believe as Christians, to save us from our sins. Our, our justification is in Jesus Christ. But our sanctification <laughs> is in Holy Spirit, all right? So when we look at what is going on in us, not the world, but in us, we are spirit, soul, body, right? So we try to put a lot of emphasis on the body, we try to maintain willpower. We try to do certain things with our body, exercise, dieting, you know, all of those things. We dress it. We, we do all the kinds of things that we, we try to do to keep our bodies strong, to keep our bodies moving forward. You know, we, we do a lot of things. But we don't put the same focus on our thought life. We don't put the same focus 
on our thought life, on our emotional life. We don't put the same focus on how we think and the thoughts that are in our minds. So many times, and I'm just going to say this, many times we, we, we are very, um, I think, physically, sensually oriented, but we're not mentally focused. And so our thought life, our mindsets, sometimes they do more harm to us than good. Oh my God, my, my, my thought life, my thought life, you know, and, and I, I, I talk to, you know, my, my folk that I shepherd and that I bishop and that I apostle, I talk to them a little different, but I'm going to talk to you all this morning like I talked to them. You know, when, when you're in a situation and you are sad, or you're in a situation and you're angry, or you're in a situation where you are fearful, or you're in a situation where you're anxious, or you're disappointed, or you have some other stuff going on, you, you want to fight, you want to retaliate. Do you ever stop and say, God, where is that thought coming from? So our emotions are very much tied to our thought life. And so I believe, I believe so in this. As a man thinketh, so is he. As a man thinketh. Good morning, Tawana. Coming up the time I rename McCoy. Thank you for those of you that understood that we just had to clean something up and we will report that. Uh, Christopher Smith. Thank you, Elder Carmelita Chestnut. Hallelujah. Christine Chavis. God bless you. So enjoy you every morning in prayer. Um, do we stop and think, why am I crying? You know, when I ask those questions, I say, why are you crying? They can't answer it because they haven't thought about it. Why are you sad? And people say, I'm grieving. And I say, how long have you been grieving? And I say, why are you still grieving? We, we don't take the time to interrogate our thoughts. We don't take the time to interrogate our thoughts. I, I want you to write down in the chat, I need to interrogate my thoughts. I need to ask myself, why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? What thought is causing me? Miyoshi, I, why are you why do you say things? What what is it that's driving that that anger or that that bitterness or that that um that 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 um uh offense? You know, listen, we don't interrogate our thought life. We don't ask ourselves, why am I why am I feeling like this? What are these emotions? And what are the thoughts that's causing me to emotionally respond like this? And does this emotional response, uh, Monica Monet, Charmaine Coleman, uh, 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 does this emotional response please God? Does this emotional response Grieve Holy Spirit. <laughs> Woo, I need to interrogate my thoughts. Why am I feeling this way? What thought is driving this? What thought is driving this? And, and so yesterday when the movers came, they came early, right after the broadcast. <laughs> and... um. I've been waiting for boxes and, you know, waiting and they hadn't come. So it was my understanding that they would bring boxes with them. Right. And so um, when they got here, they expected everything to be packed and they didn't bring boxes. And there was a miscommunication between the salesperson and the dispatch. And. My first emotion, I felt myself 
racing, you know, racing. Because, you know, I like to manage stuff and have things in order. And I, I don't like failure. And so um, the guy came in. He was very cordial to supervise. He said, let me call dispatch. You call your salesperson, blah, blah, blah. He said, it's going to take us a day to pack. And then tomorrow we will load. And then the third day we will offload at the new house, right? And I was like, well, I really want this done in two days because I really wanted to wake up in my new home on my birthday, even if I slept on the floor and stuff wasn't ready, right? And he said, ma'am, he said, Bishop, it's not going to happen like that. We're going to have to pack this house. It's going to take us a day to pack. And they got four guys, they packing. I never seen nobody pack that fast in my life. Now I can't find nothing. But what I had to do Courtney, was I had to stop my thoughts. My thought was about to drive me into a panic. My thought, my thought was about because my plan had been modified. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> my plan had been modified. And so now, Dennis, I gotta, I gotta stop. And I've got to change my thought in that moment. So I said, Holy Spirit, help me change my thought right now. Help me change my thought. Let me change my mind. Because my, my thought was about to drive an emotion that I didn't want to have. I didn't want to have that panic, that anger. I didn't want to. I want this move to be sweet because God has blessed me to be able to purchase a home, to find a place to live near my children, which is for me right now, a priority. And to be near my grandson, to be near the girls, you know, and, and to be close still to the church. But I had one thing in my plan uh, 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 yes, I am, Lou Wilson. I, and, and but in that moment, I had to take it out before it took root. Ooh, shakaba, hallelujah! <laughs> Woo, thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thing, I wish you were too, Lord Jesus. I may send for you just to help. <laughs> And I didn't want to be overwhelmed. I'm, I'm not good in confusion. I'm not good. When I look around, I see boxes and I don't know where my clothes are and I don't know where anything is. I'm not good with it. I'm, I'm just not good. That's not a place I thrive. I don't thrive well in, in, in uh, confusion or disarray. You know, I'm kind of orderly and even my disorder is ordered, right? But I, I had to pay attention to the emotion that was coming. And the emotion, Dr. Noreen, that was coming would have thrown me off all day. Now, I had to arrest that thought. I had to arrest the thought. I, I couldn't get angry with the salesperson and I called him and he was talking, whatever he was talking. And then the supervisor that was on the job said, let me speak with him. So he spoke with them and he said, I got it for you. I said, thank you. I, you know, I don't think we realize we got help. We have help with our feelings. We have help. And that would have taken me out. The cunningness of the enemy that would have taken me out for the whole day, for this whole thing. Come on here, Gloria Jean. We have to interrogate our thoughts. We, we, don't, we don't do a good job with our thoughts. Well, if emotions and feelings are driven by thoughts, I don't want you to start saying, okay, uh, let me work on my feelings. No, work on your thought life. Work on your thought life. 
I was speaking to one of my elders, my dear elder Lottie, and I, I said, what took you out? And she began to share. I said, come on, you know, change that thought. Change that thought. Change the thought from failure. Change the thought. Like, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay, now you know. Change the thought. See, but Nita says about a year ago, I was in a season where I was feeling angry and unloving towards my family members, and it was making me sick. I had to trace the emotions back to the thoughts and trace to the source of those thoughts. Wow. Come on, John Andrew. Listen, I got to stop overthinking, processing at a two on a scale of one to 10, because if it gets to a three, it's a long way back. Yes, sir. A year ago, she was dealing with this. We are dealing with this. Listen, you're not thinking. It's your thinking. And Holy Spirit will help you to arrest, to identify to correct those thoughts that's driving those feelings. Holy Spirit has been given authority and sovereignty to work with us in every area, body, soul, emotions, will, spirit. What is the root cause of those thoughts? The root cause analysis, that's powerful. We got to pay attention. You're not, you're not paying, we're not doing a good job with our thought life and our emotions. And then people think that, oh, you're just hard. I'm not hard. I'm trying to get you out of a space where the enemy will, will, will suck you or suffocate, you know, the life out of you, suck the life out of you. I say, why are you crying? Why are you allowing yourself that emotional space? Why are you still grieving? Why are you so angry? Why do you commit adultery? Why do you overeat? Why do you not sleep at night? Woo Why do you feel so alone? Why do you feel like nobody loves you? What's the root of that? Where is that coming from? Why do you feel like you don't, you're not seen, you're not heard? Come on now. Whoa, talk to me, talk to me. Ah, come on, Dr. Pastor Sheila Johnson. Where is this coming from? <laughs> Where is this coming from? You, you have to do, yes, Pastor Davis, these analysis. Why am I feeling alone? Why am I feeling insufficient? Why am I feeling anxious? Why am I feeling sad? Why am I crying? Why am I eating another piece of pie? Why? Why do I feel that I'm not seen or I'm not heard? Why do I feel that I should be in a relationship that engages sexual activity and I'm not married? Why do I participate in uncleanness? Why am I drawn? Why am I attracted? Why does this turn me on? Why do I crave this? Woo, come on, Michael Ward. Woo, Rabaki Andera Bohushka. Why does this trigger these annoying, these, these annoying feelings? Why, when you come in a room, am I triggered by you? Woo, Rabaki Koshkete. What? What is it that causes me that every time I look at you, I feel a certain way? Yeah, we say that casually, but the enemy doesn't take it casual. When we say I'm feeling some kind of way. Why? What thought is driving that? And then when you come into that space, the feelings are so powerful that they can make you forget that Holy Spirit is right here, ready to help. They're so powerful. These feelings are so powerful. And, and is, is there a need to close a portal? 
Is there a need for you to shut something down Woo, that you have opened up? What have you opened up that you need to close? Why do you, why do you feel like that? Why do you feel like this about your church? Why are you so angry? Me, oh, she is so, she's so transparent and I want to put this up and open up a portal of autoimmune disease that they say there isn't a cure for. She said, but at the time, I realized that my anger and hurt was the root of the problem. Do you realize that? That's so powerful that she would share that with us. I want to say this, that many illnesses and many symptoms are directly connected to failed emotions, emotions that are not profitable, emotions that, that, that are failing you and it's manifesting in your physical body. You trigger something in your physical body, in your physical chemistry because you refuse to tame those emotions. Oh God. Woo, Rabbi Kasha. <laughs> uh, Elder Carmelita Chestnut says insomnia is a byproduct of fear, absolutely, and anxiety. Lay awake at night and sing that song, but that's all right, because Jesus will fix it. That is not all right. He giveth his beloved sleep. Oh God, I'm on my shape. Failed emotions, failed Janice, failed emotions, failed emotions. Oh, look at this. Monica says, I took communion years ago and was in a, a place of great anger with someone and it opened up a portal of sickness. I'm not sure. Ooh, am I teaching? Am I talking to someone? I need you to understand. This is not. I'm not playing. This is not Plato, folks. This is this is serious business. And the saints do not know why they're failing. The saints don't know why they're unable to keep a love affair, love relationship, or keep the church, or keep their business open, and keep themselves healthy. It's because your emotional life is sick. And you disobey God out of your failed emotional state. You, 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 you have conversations with others that you shouldn't be having. You have conversations with yourself that you should never have. And it is because of your emotions. Mother Pearl, we got to do something. Our emotions, she says, is out of whack. And I'm on me. <laughs> Whoa, come on, Pastor John Andrew Hart. This is serious. And I'm not a clinician. I'm not a physical a, 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 a psychologist or a person that operates in the mental health space. I'm in the spiritual space. Our emotions are not controlled, are not being managed. We have not tamed our feelings and we have not utilized Holy Spirit to help us. We don't realize that many things such as migraine headaches, uh, such as arthritis. Do you know what arthritis is? Arthritis is bitterness in the bones. Bitterness. Where you hold on to unforgiveness so long that it causes your bones your, 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 your body begins to take on inflammation. Do you realize that? Do you realize that you can be offended for so long until you, you cannot shake arthritis? That it triggers autoimmune diseases? That it triggers, listen to me folks, diabetes? It triggers high blood pressure? You're taking all that medicine. You're taking all these shots when what you need to do is forgive. What you need to do is to release the emotions of anger and rage and retaliation. Oh, bashi, come on, bashi. I'm trying to help us. I'm trying to help us. 
uh, and the medical community is going on and, and they're doing all kinds of things uh, to help us. But listen to me carefully. They can't help you if you still hanging on to the same negative emotions. If you are not dealing with your emotional life, if you are not dealing with your emotional life, I'm going to say it again. If you are not dealing with your emotional life, then what are you dealing with? You've got to fix it, folks. Oh, my mama did this and my daddy did this. So my past, no, your emotions. Then we get to the place where we ask Holy Spirit, are these emotions, are these feelings that I have, are they grieving you? Am I grieving you, Holy Spirit, with my emotions? Ooh. <laughs> I see some of you that are in serious situations that I'm praying about. And I want to caution you. I want to caution you to do an analysis on your feelings. Do an analysis. On your feelings. Sometimes, you know, when you meet a person that grown and they always got a slap back, they always got a push back, they always got a, a comeback, a clap back, you know. You say, what in the world is wrong with that person? Negative emotions of themselves. So I don't feel good about myself. So the only way I get seen is by being sassy or being disrespectful because I already don't feel good about me. <laughs> listen to me jealousy from a close family member since the age of five and as I got older they would fight me I wasn't a fighter wow never confronted it and had stomach pains went to ER wow Holy Spirit said ulcerative colitis and unforgiveness and when I opened my mouth and called out every person involved in the conspiracy God healed me in the floor. Good God Almighty, Teresa. Whoa, shit, come on. Good God Almighty. Whoa. I know it to be true. I know this is true, folks. A smart mouth, a grown woman with a smart mouth, a grown man that's bitter and mean spirited. Mm -mm. You're dealing with something they've never confronted. They've never confronted it. All of this, all of these uh, passions and things that we go after, overachieving, because somewhere in our childhood, we feel overlooked. We feel underloved. Oh, God. Oh, God. This is where the enemy fights you in the area of your feelings, your emotions. And we have not taken Holy Spirit serious when it comes to taming our emotions. Oh, Rabbi Honda, this is why, hallelujah, God wants truth in our inward parts. <laughs> My spiritual director, this is why God, and so until we master that, we will constantly be tormented in this area. Fear of failure, fear of exposure, fear of rejection, fear of disappointment, fear of success. All of those things are emotions. Those are feelings. Now, this is what I want you to hear me. And I want you to hear me good with this. The scripture says to us that if we walk in the spirit, Galatians 5 and 6, team, we will not fulfill the feelings, appetites, or emotions of the flesh. I'm in Galatians 5 and verse 16. Now, we're on this side of demonic oppression. We have not gotten to that. But this is how we become oppressed by demons. Now, the Bible says that he wants truth in our inward part, in our feelings.
feelings. In our feelings, when we feel overwhelmed, when we feel overlooked, or we feel that we have been done uh, a disservice, or we've been treated unfairly, those are the times when you get to see where you are emotionally. When things are going good, you flying high, you don't pay attention to the fact that you're addicted to success or you're addicted to, to outside or external validation. You don't realize. And so there's so much endorphins release. There's so much joy and pleasure and happiness while you're on the up that you don't recognize that you are emotionally fragile. It is only when you come down out of the high, when you are no longer the queen of the ball, you're no longer the king of the castle, that you begin to see. When someone else is elevated over you, when someone else gets the position, the job, the promotion, when someone else is seeing in a limelight that you believe you should be seen in. That's when we begin to look at how fragile we are emotionally. I'm really teaching good. Woo, Rabbi Kasa. Hi, And we have to ask Holy Spirit to heal us, to search our hearts and show us where is this coming from? Now, there are certain cycles, you know, we see middle child syndrome, we see certain, certain clinical, psychological uh, uh, cycles and patterns, but I'm not a master in those spaces. I want to stay in my lane dealing with believers who are struggling with their emotions. I want to stay in the area of why when your husband says something to you that you believe lowers your value, and this is not at all to forgive him for that, but how do you feel when your pastor or when a bishop or another leader or your boss does not give you the accolades, the applause? How does it make you feel? And, and, and I'm telling you, I, I had to fix those things. I had to fix it. I had to fix those things. If I feel like I'm overlooked, if I feel like no one's paying attention to me, how does this make me feel? How does it make me feel? And I wrote a book. I don't have it here because it's in boxes. But I really want to talk about this, Monica. It's called Father Hunger. I wrote a book called Teach Your Daughters to Fly. And I talk about in this book how when a woman does not get the fathering, that she lives her life with father hunger. I'm going to write a book about sons who don't get that emotional need from their mother. I, I want to suggest that there are a lot of pastors in ministry that have mother hunger or mother hate. And the reason that they're so strongly against women in ministry has nothing to do with their theology. Their sociology is off. Are you listening to me? Oh my God. Thank you, Dr. Patricia James. I, I, if, if you are a girl and you need to know how to cure father hunger, you need to know, this is a great book, Teach Your Daughters to Fly. If you're a father and you have a daughter, you have a woman, and she can be grown, but you need to get the book because your daughter, even though you're alive and present, could be suffering with father hunger. If there's an emotional need that she needs to get from you. So that's why so many women cannot submit to a female pastor. So many women cannot submit to a female bishop. You know why? That they search for 
father validation. Now, they know within the body of Christ that they will never get all that they want, but they will constantly run behind a male pastor or male bishop where a woman pastor, a woman bishop has been there to help them, to support them, but they can't submit to that because it doesn't scratch the hunger of a father. This is why so many of you women join these churches and you call your pastor dad because emotionally you are missing a father. Y'all not going to say nothing. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not going to say anything to me. You're not going to say anything to me. In search of father validation, in search of mother validation. And when a man is against his mother, he has a, he has a mother hate. He, he will be abusive. He will, he will violate women emotionally. And oftentimes a door is open for male gratification and male sexual satisfaction. These are things that we don't get into, uh, Apostle Janice. We've got to teach this nail uh, chapter. We've got to deal. Holy Spirit does not want any part of us to be untouched by Holy Spirit. My hurts, my wants, my lacks, my 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 areas of 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 of. Uh, of lack, my areas of need, Holy Spirit has been given to do more than speak in tongues, heal the sick. No, you've got to be well and whole. Oh, God. Oh, Rabbi, I keep, oh, shkete, namahada. Oh, Baba, Baba, I shkete, ba. I listen to me very carefully. This type of behavior, thank you, Overseer Ryan, leads to the crossing of boundaries and unhealthy relationships. Oh my God. Come on, Glory. You can grab that book. You can go to our website and go over to, uh, to Amazon and get Teach Your Daughters to Fly. Every woman needs to read it. Every man needs to read it. I'm telling you. Oh my God, I thank you for the resources. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabbi Mashe, Kama Mama Sia. Renee says, I always wanted the relationship my sister had with my mother. Wow. My mother said she knew her children and what they needed. And I was always the one who could be relied on and didn't receive the nurturing because it wasn't what you needed. And so to have that expectation, the thought is, here it is, Renee. Let me just use you as a, as a model, if you don't mind, baby. The thought that needs to change is that, number one, your mother didn't love you. You got to change that thought. Number two, you got to change the thought that you needed what your sister needed. You got to change that thought. If you don't change that thought and accept the fact that you did not need that type of nurturing, and that the nurturing you received is what you need, you will heal. But it starts with changing the thought. Now, if you don't, you'll blame your mother and you'll be jealous of your sister for no reason. For no reason. Only because of a thought. Someone placed that thought in your mind that your mother loves your sister more than she loves you and you should want what she gets. Change that thought. And come to the place and say, my mother loved me so much. She loved me differently, but she loved me. And my sister got what she needed and I got what I needed. And so even as a grown woman, you will stop panting and stop desiring that from even your mom and other women, which can lead to unhealthy relationships. Oh God, it's, it's in it. God gives us what we need, but we don't like it. Because we have not changed the thought. Oh, Baba Sheikh, Kama Mama Saya. And the area in which you don't know about your sister that your mother knew is an area that she didn't feel that she needed to reveal to you. But she loved you the way that she knew you to be. But we got to change our thought. 
Got to change our thoughts. If not, you'll constantly look at your sister as someone who stole something from you. Listen, folks, these emotions are real, but they can be tamed. Oh, God, they can be tamed depending upon the age in which your mother had your, you or the age in which your mother had us. Oh my God, there's so many dynamics. But we can walk in the spirit and no matter what journey we've been through, no matter what our legacy is, no matter what experiences we've had, we still can walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust, the emotions of our flesh. Ooh. We got to change some thoughts, folks. We got to, we got, if we're going to get to Pentecost and we're going to be profitable to God in the era of Pentecost, we are going to have to deal with our thought life. Our thought life has to be dealt with, folks. I don't know why you don't think that your thought life doesn't have to be dealt with. Your thought life has to be dealt with. And when you understand that, when you understand Holy Spirit is your advantage, when you understand that Holy Spirit is your advantage, when you understand that Holy Spirit gives you advantage even over your feelings, even over your emotions. Sometimes you, I want to be seen. I, I want to, I want to be seen. I want to, no, no, no. You want to be healed. You want to be well. You don't want to fulfill the lust of your spirit. Listen to this. Verse 22 of Galatians 5. Now here is the fruit of the spirit. Love joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. And those who are Christ's must crucify, here it is, I'm in Galatians 5 and 24, must crucify the flesh with its passions and desires. Wow. Wow. What you must crucify. Many of you are performance driven. I hear this in the spirit. Performance driven, performance driven. And that simply means that you are a you are great at performance, but the motive behind your performance is not godly. Mm. You you can perform, you serve, you can do things, you can be available. You are adjutants, you are ministers, minstrels. You do all of these things and you do it well. But the motive behind it is ungodly. The motive behind it, Evangelist Kiba, the motive behind you are talented. Some of you are Sarah Vaughn Harris. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Listen, Vita, yes, come on. You are talented. You are gifted. You are able to make course corrections and help and assist. You are a leader's jewel. You, 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 you are a great parent. You are a great wife, husband, all of those things. But your motive is ungodly. Oh, my God. Ooh, Rabbi Kashkete. Heidi says, I was an only child adopted at three. My adopted mother was depressed and bitter due to her childhood. And she would say, why can't you be more like your friend? Wow. So I often feel the weight. Hallelujah. Ha, I, I've compared myself thinking my husband feels the same way, which he doesn't at all. <laughs> you got to conquer this baby. And here's how you're going to conquer it. You're going to crucify 
those passions and desires. You're going to crucify them. And so many times when we do all that we do and we don't get the applause, Otis, we don't get the celebration, we don't, we get the, the opposite. Now we're offended. Now we're bitter. Why? All I did for you, all I did, but your motives was emotionally perverted. I used, I, I, I used to wonder about uh, the Bible talks about these ungodly affections. The Bible talks about how there are people that have uh, ungodly affections, and I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't understand what that meant. Um, I, I didn't understand what that that meant, but I, I came across it. I, I did come across it. Uh, and and when I came across it, I didn't fully understand it. And it talks about it in Second Timothy. It talks about in the last days. It says that that men will be lovers of themselves, and they will be without natural affections, ungodly. Then I found another scripture that talked about inordinate affections. Uh, 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 inordinate affections are unhealthy and obsessive attachments to a person or to a thing that manifests through uncontrollable love. Am I teaching? Are you are you learning anything? On inordinate affections, inordinate affections, whereas I am, I, I move by compulsion. It is an obsessive attachment. I ran into this. People want to be your adjutant. They want to serve you. And, and God knows you need the help. But there is an obsessive attachment to you. And it manifests through this uncontrollable love. Love is in quotation. And I'm telling you right now, this is not the hour for you to be caught in an area of inordinate affections. This is not the hour that you want to be caught in unnatural affections. Oh my God. I got to go, folks. <laughs> I don't know where the time goes. I hope you are learning something. And I've seen it in this adjutancy, particularly in church. I've seen it on jobs. You know, I've seen it when people are in the two slot and, 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 and there's a mother hunger or there's a father hunger and they start serving you and they start off with pure intention, but they get to a place where they're obsessed with you. There is an obsessive attachment and it manifests through uncontrollable love that will kill you. And that's what happened to that young girl, Selena. Her adjutant murdered her. Are you listening to me? Untamed emotions. Can Holy Spirit help me tame my emotions? And the answer is resoundingly yes. It's going to take a little work. We're going to have to crucify some stuff. But if we live in the spirit, we can walk in the spirit. Whew, my God, what a lesson up in this place. Woo, glory to God. What a lesson today. What a lesson this week. What a lesson. Oh, my God. I want you to hear me very carefully. Don't miss this. Now, I'm going to just give you a little announcement. Depending upon the move. Praise God, this may be the last day of this week. And certainly tomorrow is my big birthday, praise the Lord. And uh, so I may not be back this week, uh, but by the grace of God, by Monday, amen, we should be back online. 
But look for pop-ups because you never know. If I can find a, a strong internet, you never know. Hey, I love y'all. Amen. If you don't see me uh, tomorrow, the next day, join me back for December the 5th. We'll be right back, hopefully, in our new place. I love y'all. Have a super day. And remember to walk in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs>